Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 45th President of the United States, President Donald J. Trump. Do you have spirit? Hello, Louisiana. Thank you very much. Incredible. What a crowd. And you've got thousands of people outside right now. So if anybody wants to give up their seat, thank you very much. So I'm really thrilled to be back. This has been an incredible state for Trump. And it's been an in really incredible. You remember what happened? That wasn't even a close election, was it? That wasn't too close. But it's great to be with thousands of proud, hardworking, freedom-loving American patriots. That's what you are. And soon, the people of Louisiana will head to the polls. You know, I'm really here for a little different reason. It's called early voting. You believe it? That's how much I like Eddie. I'm here for early voting. You know, you can go out and vote. I said, well, not a lot of people do that. They say in Louisiana, 40% of the vote is early voting. I said, like I said, I think I'll come. I'll come here. But you're going out to replace a radical, liberal Democrat as your governor, John, John Bell Edwards has not done the job. You're going to have a great new Republican, tremendously successful man as your governor, Eddie Risponi. Eddie. Eddie Risponi. So early voting is already underway. And I think I'm coming back here on Thursday. Do you believe it? I'm doing a double. I'm doing a double. One of your really good anchors just interviewed me, the locals. Those locals treat me good. The fake news doesn't treat me too good, but the locals, the locals do. And he said, you know, you've been to Louisiana already like four times. I said, that's because I happen to like it. If I don't like it, I can't do it. Okay, okay. But early voting ends on Saturday, and then you go out next Saturday and you vote. And I just want you to get out, do it early. That way you can do, watch your football games. And by the way, by the way, this Saturday, this Saturday, I'm going to be at a certain game. This Saturday, I'm going to be at a certain game. Let's see. It's LSU versus a pretty good team from Alabama. <laughs> and I hear, and I, you know, I'm a football fan. I hear you have a great quarterback. We're going to see. Big test. We're going to see. But I'm actually going to the game. I said, that's the game I want to go to. So that'll be, uh, that'll be tremendous. Two great teams. Two great teams. And I look forward. So I came to get you for early voting for Eddie Risponi. Going to be a great governor. Under Republican leadership, the economy is booming, wages are rising, confidence is soaring, and America is stronger than ever before. And you know it. We're setting new records every day. And with the help of Louisiana energy workers, the United States is now, you know, you have some of the greatest energy and energy workers anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. The United States is now the number one producer of oil and natural gas anywhere 
on planet Earth. And we are supporting law enforcement, and we are supporting our police. We're rebuilding our military. And you know where all this beautiful new equipment is made? The rockets, the jets, the ships, everything. It's made in America. Don't we love that? And we're defeating radical Islamic terrorists. We're defeating them. And you saw last week, the monstrous animal known as al-Baghdadi is dead. dead. You know, if somebody else did that, they'd be talking about it for months. Me, I got about a day out of it from these people, but well, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Look at how many there are. They have a lot of people. They have a lot of people. You know, it is true. I'll, I'll say who the greatest hero was. Forget about Trump. I'm not a hero. We did a lot of good work together. Every, the dog was the great hero. Right? Conan. Conan. He's coming to the White House very soon. I said, bring him now. They said, sir, he's on a mission. I said, you got to be kidding. Come on. Give him a couple of days rest, please. But no, Conan is coming to the Oval Office very shortly, so that's good. But our message to these bloodthirsty savages is clear. You don't stand a chance against the righteous might of the United States military. Because America is winning again, and America is respected again. But while we are delivering safety and prosperity for Americans, the radical left Democrats are trying to rip our nation apart. They want to eradicate the rule of law, punish religious believers, silence you online, indoctrinate your children, and they're after your Second Amendment. Don't ever forget it. They're after your Second Amendment. And with the Republicans, I can tell you one thing. Nobody's going to hurt your Second Amendment. Nobody. In their campaign to transform America, Democrats are becomingly increasingly totalitarian suppressing dissent, defaming the innocent, eliminating due process, staging show trials, and trying to overthrow American democracy to impose their socialist agenda. Make no mistake, if the Democrats get back in, you will have a depression, the likes of which you've never seen before, and you are doing well. How are your 401ks doing, by the way? You wouldn't feel at all angry if they went down in half, and then in another year, half of that. That's what's going to happen. First, it was the Russia hoax. Then it was Mueller. Remember Mueller with that hoax. The biggest lie ever foistered upon the American people, okay? But everybody stuck with us. If anything, we became more popular. Maybe more popular. I mean, last week, Hillary Clinton, crooked Hillary, as we affectionately call her, <laughs> so is there any place you would rather be than at a Trump rally on a beautiful, wonderful evening in Louisiana. I don't even know, would you rather be at LSU versus Alabama or a Trump rally? Let's take the Trump rally. But Democrats must be accountable for their hoaxes and for their crimes. Now, corrupt politicians Nancy Pelosi 
and shifty Adam Schiff. And the crooked media have launched the deranged, delusional, destructive, and hyperpartisan impeachment witch hunt. Now we go again. Except a lot of things have happened. Because, you know, I don't know if you saw, I just got off. I'm coming off the plane, and they hand me, look at this character. Okay, they just hand me this story. Coup has started, whistleblower's attorney said, in 2017. You know when that was? That was a long time ago. It's all a hoax. They say January 2017, a coup has started, and the impeachment will follow, ultimately. It's all a, it's all a hoax. It's a scam. And you know who helps them? These people right back here, the media. And then it said, oops, the light's going to go off. The CNN light is going to go off. It said, from the lawyer, a sleazeball. It said, I predict at CNN will play a key role in at real Donald Trump not finishing out his first time. Can you believe this? This is a whole, and this was done a long time ago. Then he goes, as one falls, two more will take their place, referring to outgoing Trump administration employees, who, by the way, have been put through hell by the sleaze back there and by crooked politicians. It just came out. That's the whistleblower. You know the whistleblower, the one that came out with this, oh, the Trump said this and Trump said that. And then when they heard my real phone call, the whistleblower disappeared. Shifty Schiff, he's a corrupt politician. Schiff didn't want to have the whistleblower anymore because nobody thought I was going to release the phone call. But as soon as I released the phone call, and you don't like doing that with a foreign leader, because you got to deal with foreign leaders. You don't want them to think Today, I spoke to President Erdogan of Turkey. I don't know. Is he worried that we're going to release it all over the world because somebody said something that could have been a little bit wrong? You can't do that. You can't do that. Now, in this case, I had a perfect phone call, a totally perfect phone call. And, and you know, anybody that can read, you saw that on Mark Levin. But the whistleblower, before they knew I was going to release, he came out with a whistleblower, you know, like he's some wonderful person. Take a look at the whistleblower. But the whistleblower came out with this horrible statement about this call. So I really had no choice. I said, immediately, talk about transparency. I said, release it. Release it immediately. And then the whistleblower saw it, and Shifty Schiff saw it, who's a total crook. Schiff saw it, Pelosi saw it, and they said, we got a problem. We don't want to have anything to do with the whistleblower anymore. And the whistleblower disappeared. You know who else disappeared? The second whistleblower. And you know who else disappeared? The informer to the whistleblower, if there was such a person, which I doubt, which I doubt. So here it is. It just came out. Just came out. It's a disgrace. I'll tell you what. It's so bad, these people are bad people. And it's so bad what they do to our country. They rip the guts out of a country, and it's a shame, and they shouldn't be allowed to do it. And people should stop. Maybe go to the Supreme Court, maybe, but they got to stop it, because we have a country to run. And these people, in order to do things, are willing to do illegal acts. It's an illegal act, as far as I'm concerned. Last week, the Democrats voted to nullify the ballots of tens of millions of Americans, disgracing themselves and dishonoring their oaths. Now, the good news, the Republicans were unanimous. The Republicans finally stood together. They stood together. Because, you know, the Democrats are lousy politicians. Lousy. They have open borders. How do you like having an open border with Mexico? Do you like that? The Democrats want open borders. They want sanctuary cities. You're not too big into sanctuary cities. With John Bell Edwards, you will soon have a sanctuary city in your midst. But the Democrats, think of it, they want open borders, which means crime. Now, look at what's going on in Mexico. 
And I'll tell you what, I have to thank the Mexican government in one way. 27,000 soldiers, but they have other problems. These cartels are a tremendous problem. We're building, and we are building the wall. That wall is going up, and it's going up fast. It's going up. Our military is now building the wall, and it's going up fast. The Army Corps of Engineers, and it's going up, and it's doing great. It's doing great. Should have been built years ago. That wall should have been built many years ago. Never did. They never could figure it out, but I figured it out. It wasn't easy. I had 100% of the other party fighting me, 100%. Do you think that's easy? And you know, we had a majority of a few people, very little, very little. We needed Democrat votes, but we had 100% of the people. And I made one mistake. I should have said, I don't want the wall, and the Democrats would have absolutely insisted that I build it. I should have said. You know, five or six years ago, they all wanted the wall. It was only when I came along and I said, we got to build the wall now. You know, you've wanted it, but you never had the vision or the talent to get it built. So we got to build it. I figured they'd all join, and instead they said, no, we don't want the wall anymore. They said, no, no, we can have drone tech now. Oh, that's great. People are pouring across. You got drones flying all over the place. That's great. That's great. No, we should have said we want to never build a wall, and they would have insisted that it get built immediately. <laughs> These are, I call them now the do-nothing Democrats. We have loopholes that they could solve in 15 minutes. We could sit down, loopholes, catch and release, chain migration, you know, that's when you come in. And then everybody you ever met in the history of the world comes in with you. Your mother, your grandfather, your cousin, your brother, your aunt, your uncle. Any person that ever met you, come on into our country. We had a man on the West Side Highway. I don't even call him a man. I call him an animal. He ran over a lot of people. He turned right going up very, very fast speed. But we had this beautiful park in New York City. And he killed, I think, eight people. They never talk about the people that lost their legs that lost their arms, that are permanently disfigured. They never talk about that. They say eight people were killed. They don't talk about people. These are people that want to keep themselves in shape, and they're running, and they're running, and they're all over. And then this maniac turns to the right, going at an unbelievable speed, and he kills people, and he horribly injures people. And we can't let this happen. We can't let it happen. These unhinged extremists, the Democrats, have been plotting to illegally overturn the election that we won. I didn't win it. We all won it together. They came from all over the place. I mean, they came from all over. I mean, your state isn't that Republican, and yet we're so far up. But I'll come to see you anyway, even, yeah, you could say, you know, focus on a couple of the closer ones, but we're going to come here anyway, and because we do love it. But think of this. 19 minutes after I took the oath of office, the horrible, disgusting Washington Post, which is a terrible paper, it declared the campaign, this is 19 minutes, I just taken the office, and an article comes out. The campaign to impeach President Trump has begun. Oh, that's nice. Thank you very much. See the reporter over there? Praise you. And then during the term, sleepy Joe Biden, who's dumb as a rock, said, you fire the guy, you get a billion dollars. You don't fire the guy, you get nothing. And it's on tape, and the press refuses to print it. You talk quid pro quo. You fire the guy, you get a billion. You don't fire, you get nothing. Think of that one, okay? That's called quid pro quo. Not here. That was said by Joe Biden to get rid of the prosecutor in Ukraine who was looking at his son who just got thrown out of the Navy, who was paid millions and millions of dollars, even though he had absolutely no energy experience. In Louisiana, in Louisiana, you wouldn't have hired him and your energy companies. They would have paid to keep him the hell out, okay? He had no experience.
How old is your son? How old is that young man there? How old are you? How, how old? Yeah. Eight. Let me tell you, he's eight. He knows energy better than Joe Biden's son. <laughs> then Biden flies to China. He obviously met with different people than I deal with, because we're doing well with China, but I'll tell you. Huh. But he flies with his father, who is then vice president. And in 10 minutes, he picks up $1.5 billion for his fund. These are different Chinese people that I've been working with, excuse me. I called up one of the top guys on Wall Street. I said, can you do that? Nope, I've been trying for years. I can't do it. He's like the smartest guy on Wall Street. Now the Democrats are covering up slow, sleepy Joe. And they're trying to steal your vote and silence your voice. And I don't even know, because I'm looking at Pocahontas. She's talking. Can you imagine? No, no. Pocahontas is starting to emerge from the ashes. I thought she was gone. We hit her very hard six months ago. I give her credit. She's emerging from the ashes. Not a nice person. 1,024th Indian blood. I have more than she does. And I have none. I have none. But I have more than she does. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to have some. I just happen to have none. But I believe I have more than she does. Generations of American patriots sacrificed everything they had to secure this republic and your sacred right to vote. We will not let the Democrats take that incredible privilege away. The American people are fed up with Democrat lies, hoaxes, smears, slanders, and scams. The Democrats' shameful conduct has created an angry majority, and that's what we are. We're a majority, and we're angry, that will vote the do-nothing Democrats out of office in 2020, especially we're going to take back the House. And we're going to focus on, like, those 36 Democrats in Trump areas, areas that I won by a lot. I didn't run in 2018. You know, they keep forgetting. I didn't run. I said, go out and vote, go out and vote. But a lot of people said, I'm not going to vote until Trump runs. Okay, that's nice. I love those. I love the people. I lo but they see what we're doing. But I didn't run in 2018. But people forget. We picked up two seats in the Senate. They never want to talk about that. We picked up two seats. They never talk about it. I try to get them to talk about it. And because of that, what we've done with judges and different appointments, but with your help, we are going to drain the swamp, and that's what we're doing. Right now, Louisiana can send the radical left a message that they can never ignore. And don't forget, in 2016, people came from the mountains, and the valleys, and the rivers, and the oceans. They came from all over. The Democrats said, what the hell is happening? Where are these people coming from? These were people that were great Americans, worked hard, made a lot of money, much smarter. You know, they call them the elite. We're the elite. We're the elite. I know this. I know this. Speaking for myself, I went to better schools than they did. I went to, I have nicer houses than they do. I have nicer apartments. I have nicer everything. And they're elite. But we're not elite. You people work your asses off. You're making a lot of money. You're smarter than they are. You're smarter than they are. Antifa, you ever see Antifa? You know what that is? That's the size of their arm. They come in with the black helmet, oh, they're big, tough guys. And then they start hitting a single reporter, conservative reporter. They start battering him with it. But when the tough guys show up, Antifa says, I think we'll take a pass. Let's get out of here. Now, you're smarter, you're tougher, you're richer, 
You got more going. But a lot of people that came out because they didn't like what they were seeing. They didn't want to vote for the people that were running for president. They didn't want to vote for Obama. They didn't want to vote for the people that were running for president. But when I ran, something happened that was amazing. The lines were, I'll tell you what, in some cases, miles long. And they saw something, they said, what is going on? And you know what was going on? Probably the greatest election in the history of our country. It's your election. It's your election. I was your spokesman. I was a person that uh, was able to tell a message, but I'm representing you. And now these people illegally, through corrupt people like Adam Schiff, that makes up what I said. He gets up in front of the United States Congress and the American people, and he reads my statement, but I didn't say it. He made it up, and then we called him on it because he never thought that I was going to release the conversation because you just don't do that. But Ukraine was great. We called them up. Do you mind if we release the conversation? No, we don't. Why? I said, don't worry about it. Just, we're going to release it. Thank you very much. And we released it. And we caught them in the middle of a giant lie. They're a scam. They're scammers. So you're going to fire your liberal Democrat governor. I don't know how the hell he ever got there. How did he get there? This is Louisiana, right? This is Louis. How did you get a liberal Democrat to be your governor? Could you explain that, please? No, I actually know it was a convergence of a lot of different things happened. And congratulations. And your car insurance is the highest in the world. Your taxes are horrible. You're rated number 50 in economic development. Can you believe it? With all that we're doing, you're rated 50 out of 50. But we want to send Governor, and I mean, I know this man for a long time. He's an incredible talent. He's an incredible businessman. He doesn't need the money. He's a wonderful person. He has the backing of Ralph. And I tell you what, Ralph is a winner. You know Ralph, right? <laughs> Ralph Abraham. Right? He has the backing of Ralph. I just spent a lot of time with Ralph Abraham. We came in together, and Ralph wouldn't have missed it. And he's an incredible man. He's an incredible man. And he respects Eddie, and Eddie respects him a lot. They had a hard-fought deal, but they respect each other and like each other a, a lot. And that's rare, because I'll tell you what, if I'm going to get somebody, I don't know if I could ever like him. I don't know. But Ralph is a better man than me. He's a better man. And they're going to put that all over television tonight. Because they're going to say, Ralph should run for president if that's the case. And that's okay. Now, he is. He's a great man. So, Eddie Rispone is not a career politician. He's a business leader, highly, highly respected. A man of faith and a lifelong Louisiana Patriot. And many of you know Eddie through his success. Eddie will cut your taxes and regulations. He will cut your car insurance in half. We have the highest car insurance in the entire nation by far. Some people call it auto insurance. Call it whatever the heck you want. You have the highest in the country. He's going to cut it in half or more and turn this state into a giant magnet for great paying jobs. That's what he wants to do. Eddie is tough on crime, strong on borders, and he'll work with ICE and Border Patrol to get violent criminals off the streets. We'll bring them back to their country, ideally, or we'll put them in jail where they belong. Eddie is pro-energy, pro-family, pro-life, and pro-Second Amendment, totally. Eddie will defend your values from the all-out assault by the extreme left. That's what they are. They're the extreme left. I call them AOC plus three. AOC, that's a real beauty. 
You only have 11 years to live, folks, 11 years, because climate change is just coming up on us so fast. You know, it's 12 years, but today I heard one of these crazies say, it's down to 11. And they arrested Jane Fonda. Nothing changes. I remember 30, 40 years ago, there, she always has the handcuffs on. Oh, man. She's waving to everybody with the handcuffs. I can't believe it. They remember that? She went to Vietnam to find out how nice they were. They weren't too nice to her, by the way. No, they arrested her today. Jane Fonda, nothing changes. They arrest every, every 25 years they arrest her. Eddie's opponent is a radical liberal, and you didn't know that. In fact, he even says good things about me, but he'll never vote for me. You know why he says good things about me? Because he thinks you like me. If he didn't, otherwise he'd say bad. But here's the thing. He'll say good things. In fact, I said he must be a Republican. He sometimes says better about me than most Republicans. But here's the problem. He'll never vote for us. He'll never support our Second Amendment the way we need the support. He's never going to reduce your car insurance. He's never going to cut your taxes. He's had a long time. He wasn't able to do it. I got you a big tax cut, the biggest ever. I mean, the Democrats, they have this crazy theory. I don't know how it works. I, I don't think I could be a successful Democrat. You know, one of their theories, we're going to raise your taxes. Now, how does that work? I'm always saying we're going to get you a bigger. We are. We're going to cut your taxes more. They're saying, look, what do I know? I've only been doing this for three years. But they say, we're going to raise your taxes. And I'm saying, excuse me, does that work? That's what they say. No, I'm going to cut your taxes even further. And you see what it's done for our country. But you have a radical liberal named John Bell Edwards. Edward was an ardent supporter of crooked Hillary Clinton, and she is crooked as hell. John Bell Edwards broke his solemn promise to the people of Louisiana when he rammed, that's the only word I can say, rammed through the largest tax hike in Louisiana history. Does everybody remember that? He gave you the largest tax hike. And then he probably says, I raised your taxes, vote for me. No, I'm saying this, I lowered your taxes. I gave you the greatest tax reduction in the history of our country. Greater even than Ronald Reagan's reduction many years ago. Now maybe that doesn't work in modern day politics, but you know what, I'm gonna stick with it, okay? Whether it does or not, I'm sticking. And you see what's happened. Billions and billions and trillions of dollars is coming back into the country. We're the hottest economic force anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. And taking in more with a lower rate, we're taking in much more money than we did with a higher rate. That's a pretty good statement. He violated your sacred trust and can never be trusted again. He raised your taxes, and he's done nothing about your car insurance. You know, one of the big things here is car insurance, right? And I kept saying, what are the things? Because I want to pinpoint it. And I kept seeing car insurance. That's very unusual. I've never heard that with the state. I never thought of car insurance, right? But here, your car insurance is the highest in the, in the nation, and it's out of control. And it's so easy to do. Now Edwards is trying to demolish your state's economy by shutting down Louisiana energy on behalf of the crazy, radical, far left. Edwards is totally owned by the liberal trial lawyers who are causing your state insurance rates and car insurance to skyrocket through the roof. Perhaps most disturbing, Edwards has allowed illegal aliens to steal millions of dollars in health care from hardworking Louisiana citizens. He cares more about illegal aliens than he cares about Louisiana citizens. I'll tell you what. I love our military. Eddie loves our military. They care more about illegal aliens than taking care of our vets and taking care of our military. Edwards is dangerously soft on crime. You know that. And Louisiana has the highest murder rate. I hate to say this. Please turn off those television cameras immediately. I don't want to say it. But you have the highest murder rate anywhere in the United States. I didn't know that. I didn't want to say it. Okay, I'm sure they turned it off because they really listened to it. 
Edwards is backed by his fellow open border extremists and pro-abortion lobby. Edwards is a complete disaster for the state of Louisiana, and you cannot afford four more years of this far-left travesty. It is time to replace your failed governor, John Bell Edwards, with Eddie Rispone, who's going to do an incredible job. So everybody needs to get out and vote early. Vote early. 40 percent. I can't believe 40. I never heard 40 percent. Usually it's like 2 percent, and they say, don't worry about it. But early voting has started, so get out and vote for Eddie Rispone and do it right away. And then let's go to the football game and let's do lots of things. Do lots of things. Do it before the game. We'll just make sure you get it out. And you know, the election itself is, uh, is going to be taking place Saturday. So get out. Get out. Get out early. Get out early. Get out early. So I want to bring up a man that I've gotten to know well, but I knew him through reputation because he's really a business legend in many ways. And he's going to put that genius to work for you. Eddie Rispone, please come up. Please come up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Before I get started, I want to say this. Congressman Abraham, I would not be here. John Bell would might be your governor today if it wouldn't be for J Congressman Abraham working very hard, the two of us, traveling this state to make sure that we got the vote out to let the state of Louisiana know we can do better. Let's give him another round of applause. Louisiana is Trump country. Is that right? We're so grateful to the president to come down here more than once now to get out the boat, to mobilize, to make Louisiana great like it deserves to be. We need something different if we want to be different. We don't deserve to be last. We are last, folks. We have got to do something different, and it starts by electing a different kind of governor. We need a pro-Trump, conservative, an outsider, someone with serious business skills, someone that's not beholden to special interests, someone that's, that's got backbone to go against the status quo, someone like Trump. That's what we need, and we want to thank the President for coming here and exposing John Bell Edwards that it is as liberal as he is. Thank you. John Bell Edwards would want you to believe he's not one of those liberal lunatics that are following, trying to impeach our President. We can send a message to them by voting me in and voting and supporting our president, Donald Trump. Listen, I didn't think they could go any lower, folks. But just this Saturday, they're running ads now and push cards all over the state, accusing our president of being a racist and me being a racist, and you being a racist. It is disgusting where, how low they will go. That is their MO. When they start panicking and worrying, they play the race card. It's unacceptable. We have a president here that has had the lowest unemployment for minorities in the history of the United States, and they'll call him a racist?
We need to send them a message, folks. Louisiana is conservative. We're going to have a conservative governor, an outsider, a businessman, someone who would make us number one in the nation. We can do that with your vote. That is amazing. That is amazing. This man can get the crowd fired up and he can get Louisiana fired up so we can go out and early vote and turn this state around. Thank him. I need your support. I need your vote. And my wife and my family can use your prayers. Thank you. And I'm going to take one more liberty. Go Tigers! Beat Bama! Thank you, Eddie. Great job, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eddie. Good man, great man, going to be a great governor. We're also thrilled to be joined tonight by many of your wonderful Louisiana leaders. And I have to say, right now, two of them, they're warriors. They're incredible warriors. I'll ask them to come up for just a second, but they don't stop. Very different type personalities, both unbelievable. They fight so hard for me, for you. They love this state. They love this country. Senator Bill Cassidy, Senator John Kennedy. Come on up, fellas. Let me just echo what Eddie Responi said. This is Trump country! And let me add to what he said. With your help, but only with your help, we can make it Responi country. Thank you! economy in all of human history. And you know what our Democratic friends have done for him? Speaker Nancy Pelosi is trying to impeach him. I don't mean any disrespect but it must suck to be that dumb. Now let me, let me tell you, let me tell you one other thing. The same people that are backing Speaker Pelosi are sending tens of millions of dollars to support Governor Edwards. And all he has given us 
All Governor Edwards has given us is decline and uncertainty. Now, unless, unless you're happy with crappy, I want you to vote for Eddie Responding for governor. And I want you, I want you to vote for Kyle Erdogan for Secretary of State. And I want you, this is important, I want you to vote for Robert Mills for the Louisiana State Senate. God bless Louisiana, God bless our president, and God bless the United States of America. Two great guys, two great warriors, two people that love your state. They love our country, and I appreciate it, too, very much. Two great senators. So I just want to bring up for a second a man who is an incredible campaigner, an incredible congressman. You talk about loving our country. He'll die for our country. He'll die for the people of this state. He loves the people of this state. He did really really well. It was a tight race, and he is all in for Eddie. And that's Ralph Abraham, Congressman. Come on up, Ralph. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mr. President, thank you for coming to Monroe, Louisiana. And thank you for making America great again. Now, Mr. President, this crowd in all of Louisiana loves to win. We're going to celebrate again when the Saints win the Super Bowl. We're going to celebrate again when LSU wins the national championship. And President Trump, we're going to celebrate you when you once again rid the world of evil terror like Al Baghdadi. Thank you. But you heard the president. We are dead last. We must do better. And to our veterans here, whose shadow that we stand in every day, to our farmers and our ranchers that till the land and herd the cattle from dawn to dusk, for our oil and gas industry that has, as you heard the president say, made us energy dominant, to our law enforcement that runs toward the bullet when we run away. And to all of us that fill up their church pews on Sunday morning and, and pray to a loving and caring God, we will win this race. So, Mr. President, Mr. President, you have shown the world what America could do. You have shown the world what America can do. And more importantly, Mr. President, you have shown the world what America will do when we're challenged. So, we're going to win this race. Go vote Saturday for Eddie. Let's get this thing done. Put the horse in the barn and go win a ball game. Thank you. Thank you very much. He's a great guy. 
He's a great guy. We appreciate it. I called Ralph. I said, Ralph, I'd love to have you. He said, sir, if you want me, if you need me, I'm here. And that's a real man. Thank you very much. That's a real man. And they're friends. They're real friends. So, where's Mason? You know, Ralph said, Mason, where's Mason? Ralph was saying, Mason, where are you, Mason? What a job he did. What did you do, fly around the world as the youngest person ever or something? Huh? Well, Ralph said, I got to mention, so I got to mention you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very important to Ralph. I want to thank other of our incredible — and I call them warriors because that's what they are. They have to be today. They won't be around long. Garrett Graves, great congressman. Garrett. Thank you, Garrett. Great job. They fight hard. A job's tougher than we all thought. It shouldn't be tough at all, but they made it tough. We have people that made it a lot tougher than it's supposed to be, but these are incredible people. Clay Higgins. Thanks, Clay. Thank you, Clay. And Mike Johnson. Thanks, Mike. Great job, all of you. And your state's Attorney General, somebody I've known for a long time, he's terrific, Jeff Landry. And two terrific men on the ballot with Eddie. John mentioned that. Kyle Ardwin and your next state senator, Robert Mills. We're also joined by Louisiana's own Phil and Willie Robertson. I love them. I gotta go. I can learn plenty from these two. Come on up here. Come up. Come up, Phil. Come up here. Come up. The great people, they've been with us from the beginning, right from the beginning, smart as can be, and wonderful people. And they hit big. They hit big. And you don't hit big unless you have it. Come on up, fellas. I got it, I got it down to this. If you're pro-God and pro-America and pro-gun and pro-duck hunting, that's all I want. <laughs> well, I don't know what else to say after following Phil and the President and Eddie, but uh, Thank you guys so much. You have been such a great community to share life with, to worship with, and uh, I'm so tickled uh, to be here with the president that he actually came down to our community. And uh, let's go, Eddie. Thank you, fellas. Two great guys. They were with me right at the beginning. I said, who are they? They said, they're two big television stars. I said, wow. And then I started watching a little bit. A lot of wisdom there. Republican policies are lifting up Americans from every background and every walk of life. America is an economic powerhouse again, like never before, actually, like never before. We eliminated a record number of job-killing regulations saving an estimated $3,000 per household. We also passed the largest package of tax cuts and reforms in American history, saving a typical family of four another $2,000. And we're boldly adopting a policy of American energy independence. We don't have to go to these faraway places anymore. I was at the opening of the $10 billion Cameron LNG export facility 
in Hackberry, Louisiana, employing thousands and thousands of Louisiana workers. They couldn't get their permits for years. I got them real fast, Phoebe. I said, how long? I said, let's go get them that permit. For years and years, they tried to get those permits. They couldn't get them. I got them very fast. And we cut a ribbon a couple of months ago. It was incredible. I've never seen a building like that one. The more pipes in that building than I've ever seen before. Meanwhile, every top Democrat running for president has pledged to abolish all American production of oil and natural gas, shipping thousands of your state's energy jobs overseas. That's all they're doing. But Louisiana will not give them that chance. We are reversing decades of disastrous trade policies. Louisiana lost one in four manufacturing jobs after the twin disasters of NAFTA and China's entrance into the World Trade Organization. Past leaders did not care one bit what happened to those Louisiana communities because they were getting rich by sacrificing your wealth to other countries. You remember, we talk about it all the time. But under this administration, the great betrayal is over. America is no longer for sale. Thanks to my tariffs, we're taking in billions and billions of dollars from a country that never gave us 10 cents, China. Can you imagine if we ever let the radical Democrats take over negotiations with China? Wouldn't be too good. Let's get Hunter to do it, right? Let's get Hunter. Come on, Hunter. Come on, Hunter. Let's see how you do, Hunter. China would love it. More than anything else, they'd love to be dealing with a different president. They actually do like me, but they don't like me, what I'm doing exactly to them. They're having the worst year they've had in 57 years. But it's not going to happen that way because we can't let our country go back to the days of being ransacked and plundered by other nations. We will not be taken advantage of any longer. Before my election, our leaders used the great American middle class as a piggy bank to fund their delusional global projects. They decimated American factory. You know this. American manufacturing was broken and decimated. To promote, they promoted economic growth in foreign countries. They didn't promote economic growth in our country. They used our military to defend immensely wealthy nations subsidizing their welfare states with your money. And they poured precious American blood and treasure into the Middle East while our great cities fell into disrepair. Eight trillion dollars was spent in the Middle East. And you want to fix a highway, they say, well, that's pretty expensive, right? Not anymore. But I was elected to be the President of the United States, not the President of the world. After years of rebuilding other nations, we are finally rebuilding our nation. And we are finally putting America first. You haven't heard that for a long time. Past leaders transformed faraway nations into chaotic war zones. Then they demanded that American citizens accept unlimited migration from those terror-afflicted regions stamping their visas for travel straight into your communities. Not anymore. My administration implemented the travel ban to block migration from some of the world's most dangerous and deadly places. And we're keeping terrorists, criminals, and violent extremists the hell out of our country. That's what we're doing. On no issue have Democrats more totally betrayed you than immigration. They threw you open, and you saw it all through the years. They threw open your borders to drug dealers, human traffickers, and to vicious MS-13 gang members. And now we're getting them out of the country by the thousands. 
Thanks to our tireless efforts to secure our southern border, illegal crossings have now dropped 70 percent since May. And when you look at what's happening over there, there's a good reason for what we're doing. We are building that wall faster than anyone thought it was possible to build the Army Corps of Engineers. We're also confronting the deadly menace of sanctuary cities, which release dangerous criminal aliens into your neighborhoods, school zones, and city streets. Republicans believe our cities should be sanctuaries for law-abiding Americans, not criminal aliens. And Republicans will always stand with the heroes of ICE, Border Patrol, and law enforcement. In the last administration, vile slanders of our police went unanswered and unchallenged. Now we are once again condemning anti-police bias and giving our officers the respect that they, that they so rightly deserve. If you want to show your love and support, for American law enforcement and just plain success of your state and your country, then vote early for Eddie Risponi. <laughs> Democrats are becoming more extreme by the day. The Democrats' planned government takeover of health care would demolish your Medicare. I will always protect Medicare for our nation's seniors. We will always protect patients with pre-existing conditions, and we will also protect patients with pre-existing physicians. <laughs> Democrats want to take away our doctors. Republicans will strongly defend your right to keep your doctor. You remember that with President Obama. You keep your doctor, you keep your plan. 28 times, it was a lie. Our ambitious campaign to reduce the price of prescription drugs has produced the largest decline in drug prices in over 50 years. Virtually every top Democrat also now supports late-term abortion, ripping babies straight from the mother's womb right up until the month, right up until the moment of birth. That is why I have asked Congress to prohibit extreme late-term abortion, because Republicans believe that every child is a sacred gift from God. <laughs> Democrats are now the party of high taxes, high crime, open borders, late-term abortion, socialism, and blatant corruption. The Republican Party is the party of the American worker, the American family, and the American dream. It's also the party of the late, great Abraham Lincoln. People forget that. We have confirmed already 158 incredible judges to interpret the Constitution as written, including two great Supreme Court justices Neil Gorsuch and Brett Kavanaugh. Our historic investment in rebuilding the military has included more than $30 million to Barksdale. Do you know where that is? You know where that is? Barksdale. Where's Barksdale? Nice? Huh? Good. Barksdale Air Force Base, right here in Louisiana and $40 million to Naval, Naval Air Station Joint Reserve Base in New Orleans. I withdrew from the horrible, one-sided Iran nuclear deal. I recognized Israel's true capital and opened the American Embassy in Jerusalem. And we recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights after 52 years. For years, you watched as your politicians apologized for America. Now you have a president who is standing up for America, and we are standing up for the people of Louisiana.
The next step to victory begins in this state, and it begins with you right now. With your support, we will show the corrupt Democrats, and they are corrupt, do-nothing Democrats, that the American people are not backing down. We need you to get your friends, get your family, get your neighbors, and get out to vote early for Eddie. And if you don't vote early, I'll be back on Thursday to get you to vote on Saturday, okay? With your help, we will lift millions more of our citizens from welfare to work, dependence to independence, and poverty to prosperity. Together, we will elect a Republican Congress. We're going to be able to do that. We have to be able to do that to create a fair, safe, sane, and lawful system of immigration and many other things. We will enact trade deals that result in more products proudly stamped with that beautiful phrase, made in the USA. We will achieve new breakthroughs in science and medicine, finding new cures for childhood cancer, and ending the AIDS epidemic in America. Did you know that? Within 10 years. I never knew we could do it until recently, and we put up the money. We'll have the AIDS epidemic ended. Who would have thought we could have done that? We will chart a new era of discovery in space, and someday, very soon, we will land an American astronaut on the surface of Mars. We will defend privacy, free speech, free assembly, religious liberty, and the right to keep and bear arms. Above all, we will never stop fighting for the sacred values that bind us together as one America. We